I'm gonna show you real quick how to do this without a ridge line. Find a stick in the woods, you can always put you a stick here. As a lean-to, you can do a lean-to in porch mode. But plenty of room to put your gear, plenty of room to sit, pretty good head room if you're sitting the down. The ability to still have some room to put your gear in here. You got shelter over you, all is well, right? That right there is your plow point shelter. The plow point shelter is probably the simplest shelter to put up. Only requires three stakes and a tie off point. If you do not have a tie off point, you can make a frame with sticks or whatever out in the woods to do that. But excellent, excellent heavy weather shelter right there. Wind, rain, snow, sleet, hail, the whole nine yards. You'll be good to go in the plow point. Clearly, you want this to be cutting the wind, so the wind's going to the back of the shelter provides excellent, excellent coverage for windy situation. And also, due to the, the way it's shaped like a plow here, rain sheds off very, very well and away from the shelter. And also, of course, you have a lot of room underneath this shelter. So plenty of room to lay, have all your gear, everything protect you from the wind at the back, protect you from heavy rain. Of course, you can bring it down lower on the tree, gets you wider coverage and lower to the ground. It's probably the simplest shelter to put together. And of course, as with some of the other shelters I've shown, because there's so many tie outs on this tarp, you can tie off to the center, tie off and go to another tree to create you a little bit more room on the inside. So there's your plow point shelter right there. Pros of it, obviously, like I've said before, great in heavy weather conditions, really good for concealment. You can set it lower at the peak you can throw brows up on it, you can throw leaves up on it, it'll help conceal it a little bit better if you're in, a, in the need for doing that. A con of this shelter, which honestly there really isn't one other than perhaps where you're going to locate your fire. If you, you need to have a fire, you clearly don't want to put it that close to the shelter. You can use longer guy line to get it a little bit further off the tree where you can have a fire right out in front. Otherwise, you kind of need it off to the side. It's not gonna trap heat that well, but for the purposes of a shelter to keep you out of the elements, it's yeehaw all day long. And with all the tie outs that this particular tarp has, you can set it down lower and use some of the other tie outs for your corners. So you can have a ground sheet up underneath if you decide to do that to keep some stuff off the ground. All right, so the Adirondack shelter. And what you can do if there's a tree out in front of you, which there's not for me, you can tie this out to a tree with some cordage and have essentially a, a little roof area, porch area, or you can just run it out to the ground at a slant like that, or simply just toss it over the back there and not have a porch area, but you still have basically a lean-to covering here with a ground seat you can throw your pack you can sit there whatever to keep off the ground or of course if you do have a trekking pole or if you want to find a stick in the woods you can always put you a stick here run a guy line to a peg in the ground and you have a nice shelter above you as well so that is the Anirondack shelter with the DD 3x3 tarp with and without a porch. Great shelter, does pretty good with uh, you know keeping you out of the elements. It is quite open, so in the aspect of being able to see your surroundings, that's a good thing. You are able to have a little bit of a ground sheet here to set gear on, which is a plus. You know, it does a pretty good job of withstanding wind and a decent amount of rain but it is quite open. It does shed well off the back. It's a great shelter system. Its drawbacks are in heavy weather situations. It could be 
a little bit cumbersome and you could get a little bit wet but does a great job when you're not in a wet situation with heavy rains or anything it does a really good job of reflecting heat if you have a fire out in front of you it does a real good job of radiating heat back and really heating the space up under the shelter that's a plus for this just a really quick and easy way to have shelter with a ridge line if you have trees available another drawback of this particular type of shelter is you don't really have you know standing room but no big deal plenty of room to lay plenty of room to get your gear out of the elements and quick and fun easy shelter to put up and another thing that you can do if you want to get a little bit more headroom in here while sitting be able to tuck in a little bit further is the tie point here you can tie cordage to this and tie it to a tree and pull this out gives you a little bit more room in here if you're sitting down or sitting on the ground cover here to kind of be able to back up a little bit more into the shelter <music> There you have it, a tent made from a tarp. Isn't that cool? So again, ridiculously versatile. Just to get you a better look at what I did back here. I did a toggle through those loops to a stake to help kind of pull that up a little bit. And of course, if you want more headroom versus width and length, you could you know, cheat the tarp in a little bit more and make the door a little smaller, blah, blah, blah. But you get the idea. Rather spacious. Let me climb in there and see. But anyway, plenty of space to lay down and stay covered. It's a shelter, right? That's what it's for. Of course, if you have another tarp or you know, your bed roll and things like that to help insulate you from the ground, you'll want to do that too. But I think it's pretty freaking cool. And it's because it's square and it's got lots of tie outs. I'm gonna show you real quick how to do this without a ridge line. All I gotta do is disconnect that one ridge line there. So all you need is hiking pole or a stick, you know, from from out in the woods. Um, be sure to chamfer the ends of the stick or put a cap or maybe take the uh, the bag that the tarp was in, kind of ball it up, put it on top so you don't accidentally like puncture your tarp. But anyway, if you use hiking poles or trekking poles, this is a great way to use them in a tent situation. So all you do is go in there, extend the pole up, you want to put it right on that loop right there because that's where all that reinforcement and everything is and the stitching and all. So that's a good place for the pole to be. And that's it. I mean, you can extend it even more if you can. So does the same thing you just have a, a pole on, on the inside right which some people may not want that pole right there if i if i don't have to have that and i can run a ridge line that's what i'll do but if you're out in the middle of a field and you don't have trees or you're in the desert or i don't know you can use a stick or a trekking pole So here we have our basic lean-to. I can stand under it. Of course, you can make this lower and get the angle further back if you want. And of course, you can attach to the center tie-outs, pull this out and get yourself a little bit more room in the back. So very, very basic folks and can be done with literally any size tarp. Of course, the size of the tarp is gonna dictate how high you can go, how far back you can go. So the advantages of a shelter like this, one, quick, easy, simple to set up, and can be set up with pretty much any type of tarp. It's great for the summertime or in hot conditions because it offers plenty of ventilation, obviously. If you have a fire or something out in front, you don't have to worry about getting smoked out or anything like that inside this type of shelter system because there's plenty of ventilation. So great for a quick, simple solution, right? Shade, 
blocking wind, light rain in a heavy rain situation, probably not the best tarp. So that is a downfall of this tarp. And also you don't get a lot of protection from the sides because it's wide open. But basic shelter, the lean-to. So what do you do in a situation where you want a little bit more protection but still want to keep it simple, stupid? As a lean-to, you can do a lean-to in porch mode or a lean-to with an awning. So there you go, basic lean-to in porch mode with an awning out front using trekking poles, or of course you can make you some poles out of sticks and whatnot out in the woods or tie off to a tree if there's a tree nearby or something like that. So very cool. So, wow, that is very leaned over. So the pluses of this shelter, again, very easy to set up, very quick to set up, offers great protection now from rain. If it's not extremely windy, you know, if you got sideways rain or something like that, maybe this wouldn't be the best choice. But plenty of room to put your gear, plenty of room to sit, pretty good headroom if you're sitting down. Just a great shelter. Does really good if you have a fire out in front of you for reflecting heat back into you. Still offers plenty of ventilation and just a great quick way to go out into the woods, put yourself up a shelter, be in the shade, have ventilation and a good view out in front of you and off to both sides. But what if it gets really ugly really quick? All right, so in the situation where you're crooked. <laughs> All right, so let's say you're in this type of shelter. It gets extremely windy, the wind direction changes and you need to do something different. There's a storm coming or a storm has hit. With this setup, you're really ready to go to another setup without really changing anything, nothing to your ridge line. You've already got pegs out if you're using sticks, you're not tied off to a tree. So you really got everything you need here. All you gotta do is remove these poles. And it's just as simple as staking out corners again and set up an A-frame shelf. And that quick and easy, you are set up with a traditional A-frame shelter. Obviously, the A-frame shelter has been used for years and years and years and years and years. It's a proven design, quick, easy to set up, offers you protection from both sides here with the wind, and it offers the ability to still have some room to put your gear in here to help keep it dry disadvantages you don't have a ground sheet so you would have to provide that same with the other two shelters there's no ground protection but in a quick hasty situation this will do just fine driving wind rain keep the weather off of you and keep your gear dry plenty of room to lay down in here again this is a three by three tarp so it's just barely shy 10 foot squared so plenty of room you can even if need be you can stake out at the next corners here and you can close off the ends like doors if need be. Really cool, quick, easy way to get out of the weather using a tarp for a shelter. And then of course, when the storm passes, you can open it back up into porch mode and have a nice ventilated view of the woods where you're hanging out. So there what we have is the flying A-frame. So the flying A-frame provides very good shelter. Great shelter from the wind, driving rain, and you have enough room where you can stand underneath the shelter as well. So going back to the reason why I like to do the seam of the tarp perpendicular is so I can use these tie outs if I wanted to. I can pull these tie outs out, tie off to a tree, and that provides me a little bit more room inside the shelter. Like so. The other real benefit to this type of shelter, the flying A-frame, is it's perfect for having a hammock up underneath it.
And there you have it. You got your hammock suspended under your shelter. I've got that side there pulled out. I haven't done this side yet, but you get the idea how it gives you a little bit more room in there. And you have your hammock here. Ah. So now you can lay in your hammock. You got shelter over you. All is well, all right? So that's the flying A-frame with one side pulled out. You can pull the other side out, obviously. I'm gonna show you one more thing you can do with this. It's kind of cool. The flying A-frame in porch mode. So the flying A-frame in porch mode is just like the other shelters I've shown you in porch mode. You can just lift the front up using trekking poles or some sticks you find in the woods and it gives you a better view of the area. So at night, when you get ready to go to sleep, you may want to have it down in the flying A-frame. During the day, if you're just hanging out at camp, you can have it in porch mode. You can see what's going on around you, hang out with your buddies, watch the campfire, all that good stuff. So again, just take your poles, extend your pole, put your loop over, make a loop with your guy line, and stake it out. Do the same to the other side. Looks like the camera may have moved on me. God, this thing's so aggravating. Stay right there. Don't move. Well, move over here first. Now you're cooking. And there you have it in porch mode. So now you can sit in your hammock, hanging out, campfire. Have a view of what's going on out in front of you and get yourself a little porch area. Yeah, how about that? So the second flying shelter I'm gonna show you can also be used with a hammock. A lot of people use them with hammocks. It is the diamond fly. The flying diamond. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Get rid of these poles. We don't need these right now. And I'm gonna take the stakes, the tie outs loose back here as well. So the flying diamond or the diamond fly is exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna move this tarp so that instead of being in the middle and square, we're gonna bring the corners off to the side. So we're gonna find a corner. We wanna take that out towards the front. We're gonna take the corner, put it into our prussic. And our opposing corner, I'm gonna put it into the pressing. Pretty simple, yeah? Didn't figure I need to give you a close up of doing that because you've seen it many times already. My trees might not be far enough apart. Uh oh, there we go. My trees are almost too close. But you get the idea from seeing that. It's like a napkin over the hammock, okay? So now we stake out these corners create our diamond shape over the hammock. Roll, roll. All right, so here we have the diamond configuration over the hammock, the flying diamond. I need to be a little tighter up here. I'm pretty close to being as tight as I can get it, but my trees aren't quite far enough apart, but you get the idea. Now, what this setup offers is a little bit more side protection from the sides here. You get a little bit more protection. You get more of your suspension system typically underneath the tarp system. So that's a plus. Does really good in wind. Of course, you can bring it down lower if need be, and it'll get the tarp even down closer to the ground to help with any cross wind or whatever going underneath you while you're in the hammock. And of course, you can use a pole on this end to raise it up so that you can see a little better out of it if need be. So there you go, Yeehaw. Two flying tarp demonstrations, if you will. The A-frame and the diamond fly, or the flying diamond. So again, go out in the woods, try this stuff out, familiarize yourself with them, see what you like about them. See what you don't like about them. Play around with it. See if you can come up with a better way to do it. You know, 
it's always good to learn right and that's what we're here for teach you a few things or get you thinking enough to go out and teach yourself your own things right so i enjoy making these vidges i hope you're enjoying this tarp shelter series i got more coming so y'all be sure to hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon so you're notified when i got more vidges posted like comment down below share with your friends and uh i'll see you soon with more of this shelter series yeehaw i'm gonna take a nap under my flying diamond my flying diamond oh won't you fly you beautiful diamond yeah i make vidges i'm not a singer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.